Oh, hey, Nolly Nige. How you doing, man? I haven't seen you in ages. Hey, Tommy Dunkhouse. Yeah, I've been just down the beach. Beach, like, really chills me out. Just really, really calming at the beach. I was on my, on my lid this morning and you should have seen it. It was just like, just like, just perfect mother nature, man. Just perfect. It was just so gnarly. And I was like, just like, oh, so gnarly. <laughs> so I've seen you and the nephews have been building this pretty gnarly car. And I wanted to come and check it out and see how you guys are going. Because it looked pretty cool to me. But keep saying stuff I don't understand, man. So I was wondering if you could sort of help me out a bit here. You're talking about leaf springs and four links and five links and unequal four links and just heaps of stuff I don't get. I had to go to the beach because the beach just like would mellow me out because I, I didn't quite get it, man. So. If you could try and help me understand maybe what a leaf spring is, that'd be great. Yeah. Ah, oh, no drama's gnarly, Nige. Leaf spring's pretty straightforward. So a leaf spring is a way of mounting the diff in the back of your car. It consists of two mounts on the actual body, and then you have spring steel, just looks like a flat piece of steel runs from the back from the back to the front normally a pack of them so there'll be one long one and then another couple leaves in the pack now that's a spring that can move up and down and the differential here so we're looking at the side of the diff has a couple of bolts that run over the top and literally bolts the diff to the leaf spring. Now a leaf spring is really good if you want to carry a lot of weight in the back of a vehicle. So you'll see a lot of four wheel drives will still run a leaf spring. Utes will tend to run a leaf spring. Our little van was a panel van. It was designed to be used as a work vehicle, designed to have heavy things put in the back. So even though Toyota were not using leaf springs in all their cars of this era with the panel van they decided to because they wanted to carry a bit more weight. So it's really good at weight load and having a nice spring that way, but it's not so good for movement of the diff. So as the diff wants to move around, it's literally bolted to the leaf spring. So a lot of older cars will still run a leaf spring just because it was engineering at the time and it's probably cheaper way to manufacture and my little k15 actually has leaf springs in it still so we could go have a look at that and i can show you exactly what a leaf spring looks like on our race car so here we are underneath the k15 race car so here's the body mount this is the leaf spring or the leaf pack and here's the other body mount so as you can see there's four bits of spring steel that create a spring that can move up and down like this. Here's the big bolts I was telling you about. So they loop up and over the diff, and then they're bolted through there, and that holds the diff onto the spring. Okay, cool. Yeah, I kind of get that now. So it's not as good because the diff can't move around on its own. Right, yeah, kind of. So then you keep talking about an unequal falling. So what's a length? Why is there four of them? And what's the equality about? Like, do they not have a strong union or something? So this is pretty straightforward as well. In the 80s, the Japanese engineers had a good look at the Escort and they thought, this is a great car, we're gonna take the idea and improve it a little bit. So your Mark 1 and Mark 2 Escorts still run a leaf spring rear end and the smart 
people down in Toyota decided to go to a four link rear end. So getting rid of this, and now we go to four arms. We call them arms. So a lower control arm and an upper control arm is replaced to hold the diff in place. So the four links are hard mounted to the body here and here, and then hard mounted to the actual differential here and here. And that allows the diff to move up and down and back to front is held in place as well. So as it goes up and down like this, the four arms can rotate and move. And so if you can picture your car going sideways and the right hand wheel gets hit or the left hand wheel gets hit, now that we're on four links and instead of being hard mounted, the diff's able to move and keep traction a whole lot easier. So it's a far better design. Now, the reason it's called an unequal four link is the bottom arm is this long here. But then on a factory car, like a K70 or an A86, you have a passenger seat. And the back passenger seat sits about there. So we're unable to run this arm here all the way forward because it would be intruding into the car. Now, on a factory car, that's not an issue. And my A86 still has an unequal rear end. Would I like an equal length rear end? Yeah, I would. But you can't without cutting the car up. It still works really well, but the drama that you do have is these arms, so this is hard mounted, work in an arc like this, you see? Now this arc here is a whole lot different because the arc is determined by the length. So this one has a nice big sweeping arc. This one here is really short and stubby. And so because they do that, they're working in a separate arc and they actually fight each other. And the back of the diff will start to bind up and not work as smoothly as it possibly can. And then everyone comes along and it's super cool to lower your car. And so your top link, as you lower the diff, actually ends up doing this. Diff's here. And the bottom, bottom link goes like that. And this top arm almost becomes useless and it binds up. And that's actually why 8.6s are really good drift cars because the back links fight each other, they lock up and instead of keeping traction, the back will start to slide as it loses traction as the diff stops working correctly. So that's an unequal four link. So we now have four links holding onto the differential, moving up and down. Good design, has its flaws. So that's what comes out factory. So these are top views here. So looking down, so looking down here, you've got these two lower arms and then these two top ones here, are much, you can see here are much shorter. Okay, so it's unequal because the passenger seat's sitting there. Yeah, right. Okay. Oh, that makes sense. I always did wonder. I always did wonder. So if the factory could have made them all the same length, they probably would have, eh? Yeah, cool. Oh, those engineers in Japan, they're pretty smart still to make a little car like an 8.6 still drive good in that. So, why did you go equal length in the drift van? Is that because you're not going to have a passenger in the back? Like, where am I going to sit, man? I want to come drifting. Like, everyone always asks, where's Nige? No one ever asks, how's Nige? I'm gnarly. I'm pretty gnarly. Most of the time I've been gnarly. Well, yeah, you're pretty spot on, Nige. We can't run back seats in the car because we've got a full cage. So the back seat issue isn't a concern for me. Um, I get far too excited using five inch grinders cutting steel out. So we decided let's go 
full um, equal link for link because it's a far superior way of holding onto the diff because now this arm here and this arm here are the equal lengths. So that's hard mounted to the cage and that's hard mounted to the suspension point from the old leaf springs when it used to run leaf. So we, we used to run this, we skipped this all together and we've come all the way up here, kept that. Now these arcs here, are exactly the same. So as my diff moves up and down, my two arms are moving together and they're not fighting each other. So it should be a, a far better thing. Now I've never actually been in a car with an equal a four link, so I'm actually quite interested to, to see how it works. Now from our top view here, you can see on the factory setup that the arms are much further in. And that's, again, that's just a packaging um, concern where the chassis rail comes in like this. They just don't have the space. And there's lots of other things happening underneath their fuel tanks and whatnot. So that's where they ended up going. So when I was doing a bit of research, I spoke to a few people that are far more intelligent than myself. And uh, everyone seems to run the two arms right on top of each other if you can. Now, I was able to do that with this car. I'm gonna have to notch the chassis rail, but we were able to do it. So I thought, let's do the extra work and get it done. So arms are on top of each other like that. So that's an equal four length. So we got one, two, three, four links that are of equal length. Yeah, cool, cool. Right, I'm starting to understand now, man. So we're trying to stop the diff from moving up and down and back to front. We want to keep it exactly in the right spot. And the best way to do that is with four arms that are all the same length. Right, oh, that's sick. Yeah, okay. I get that now, man. I've been looking at everything that you and the nephews have been doing and it's all just like, just like when I'm in the green room, man, it's just like, just like double overhead on the back reef. You know, it's kind of like that. It was just like, whoa. <laughs> oh man, the beach really chills me out, hey. Can I tell you that? Yeah, it's just, just calms me right down. Yeah, it's sick. All right, so you keep saying stuff about four link, but then every now and then you say five link, man, and like, I didn't do heaps good at school and that, but five's not four, man. So why do you call it four link, but then you call it five link? What's that all about, man? Killing me here. Right, five link, what's that all about? So far we've only been talking about four, so our two uppers and our two lowers. But in the case of a leaf sprung rear end, the diff's literally held in place by being bolted down to the springs. But in this situation, we have four movable links. So side forces mean the diff can go side to side whenever it wants. These four links here, these ones, they only control up and down and back to front. They don't control side to side. So we need a fifth link in this case, it's called a panard rod. So the panard rod is hard mounted to the car and it travels this way and mounted to the diff. And that stops side to side move. So it's a panard rod. A really simple way to do it. So the panard rod has a few downsides. It has a few flaws, but it's really simple to make. And when you're not dealing with a lot of suspension travel, it's the best way to go, in my opinion. There is fancy things called Watts links that are a lot harder to set up and a lot more fabrication. And with our drift fan, I'm only gonna have 100 millimeters of rear travel up and down. So a panard rod in my situation is gonna be fine. So in a rally car, when you have much further travel, you might go a different way of doing it. That's a discussion for another day. But that's what your fifth link is, is the panard rod to help with side to side movement. You still need that panard rod even in an equal, equal four link rear end. 
There is fancy ways of setting up a forelink where you actually run the arms like this. You'll see a lot of guys doing that on um, older hot rods and utes and where they won't need the fifth link. But for me, I wanted to keep my arms both facing forward with the car because I was told that's the best way to do it and then run the panard for side to side. So that's our Leaf Spring our factory unequal four link and then the custom equal four link. These two both running a fifth link for side to side as the panard. Cool, right, so side to side's all done with that fifth link. What a champion. <laughs> right. So yeah, fifth link's pretty pretty important, eh? Cool, cool. I learnt heaps today, man. I uh, think I'll stick to the beach. You guys can do this uh, crazy car stuff, but uh, cheers, man. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go straight up. I'll just go be gnarly. <laughs> right. oh, it was really good to see you, gnarly Nige. Thanks for dropping by, man. If you got any more questions, drop back in and we can answer some more. Take it easy, dude.